Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back. Today I'm going to be filming a little chit chat, get ready with me. I've been having fun filming these about once a month, once every two months, and just kind of answering some of your questions. These are very much inspired by the coffee chat series that Jessica Braun does. I really love watching those from her, so I have been enjoying filming something kind of similar. So I asked you guys over on my Instagram, I want to say about almost two weeks ago at this point, to leave your questions, and then I also uh, left a little spot for you guys to ask questions on youtube as well so i'm going to be answering a combination of both also i just realized that the day this video is likely going to go live is my birthday so that's exciting and let's go ahead and hop into it all right i'm super zoomed in and up close and i figured for this video i would do kind of like a full face of nothing new pretty much going to use all shop my stash products but I am gonna use this palette, which isn't like brand new. I'm not using it for the first time, but it's newish to me. It's the Natasha Denona Glam, but everything else is gonna be old. Also, when I sat down to film this, I was so cold, so I put this sweater on, and now I'm kind of warm. I might change. Yeah, this morning, like early, early this morning, the radiator came on for the first time this year, so I'm like, okay, winter is coming. So for foundation, I'm gonna be using my Koki HD. I have the shade 20W, and this is one of my all-time favorites. I'm nervous that I'm gonna struggle with this today because I'm nervous it's going to pill because I put a lot on underneath because my face is starting to peel. So I mentioned in uh, I think quite a few videos back that I started tretinoin which is a retinoid. It's like a topical prescription retinoid and a really common experience with any retinol really is peeling and I wasn't really getting much peeling at first and I was going, like I had worked up to every other night for my application, I wasn't noticing any negatives, but I recently was like, you know what? I think everything is fine, let's do two nights on, one night off. And now I'm starting to get a little bit of peeling on my chin, so I think I'm gonna back off again. But before I sat down to film, I did like a lot on my base. I obviously moisturized and whatnot, but I used the um, Glow Recipe Dew Drops and I feel like as much as I talked about how I didn't think they were worth the hype, I actually think they have been making a difference for me now that I am like struggling with some peeling. Isn't this just such a beautiful natural foundation? I could go in with another layer and build up the coverage because right now I feel like I'm kind of at a nice light medium, but I think that's gonna be just fine for today. For concealer, I'm gonna use the CoverGirl True Blend. I'll link everything down below like I always do. Now, I will say, a majority of the questions that I was getting were all like New York related. I'm really only gonna apply this like right in here. It's, it's pretty full coverage. So I picked out the ones that I felt like were the most common, like where some form of that question was being asked and or like if there were any that I thought were kind of interesting, I screenshotted those also. But there were actually a lot about heading into the holidays here in New York. You guys wanted to know like what I'm excited for, what my holiday plans are. And right now I know this is gonna sound really last minute, but at the time I don't really know. We've talked about my mom coming here. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna stay here for Christmas or if I'm gonna go home. I don't know just yet. I know I need to figure that out because I need to book a flight if that's going to happen. I don't think I'm going to powder because I don't think I need it. But yes, I'm so excited for the holidays here. I don't think I've ever been in New York around Christmas time. No, I haven't. Even being here around like the Halloween time was so much fun. And I was kind of nervous that it would not feel like fall here and it wouldn't feel like Halloween. I wouldn't get the spooky vibes that I would typically feel in the Midwest. Because if you're new here, I'm originally from Michigan. I moved to New York in July, so pretty recently. But honestly, New York Halloween was so much better than I could have even expected. I ended up going with a friend. I vlogged this, so if you, I'll leave my most recent vlog link down below. But we went and looked at Stoops. So uh, we had toured Stoops on the Upper East Side, and I also did by myself on the Upper West Side. So a lot of people will decorate their homes and really get into the holiday spirit which was so cool to see also even on like halloween day it was so fun to see people in costumes just like walking around i because the city is so like densely populated i feel like i almost got the halloween vibes even more because there were so many people so you would see a lot of people in costumes and it seemed like almost every business was decorated for halloween i just feel like i still got the halloween vibes and i wasn't sure that i would 
but it was very cute. But anyways, going into holiday thinking kind of ahead to Christmas, I am so excited to go see the tree. I'm excited to see Central Park with snow. I like, I've really loved seeing the fall transition. I guess I have seen Central Park with snow because I've been here before I moved here. I've been here in the spring quite a few times. So sometimes you still get snow in the spring, but I would say what I'm looking forward to the most is seeing all of the holiday decor, especially in the store windows and even just like local spots around where I live in my neighborhood. It's just really cool to see how all out a lot of places go with decor, even just for Halloween. Like I can't wait to see the Christmas decor. Um, some of the New York questions I decided not to touch on in this video because I feel like I've answered a lot of them in some of my past Q&A videos. So I'm gonna leave those linked down below if you wanna hear more about my move. But a lot of you guys were asking like how I'm adjusting. I feel like I'm fully adjusted at this point. Like this definitely feels like my home to me. And even when I went home to Michigan in September to visit my mom for my dad's birthday, it was obviously lovely to be home and see my friends and family, but even like getting back into the city, like I felt like I was back home. Like I definitely feel that this is my home right now. And I just feel very fortunate to be able to live here. And I feel excited every day that there's something new to try and to do. I also had a sweet question about Tilly. It says you and Tilly have moved several times recently. How has adjusting to new spaces been for you two as a pet and a pet parent team? Which I thought was a really cute question. And my first thought was, I was like, we haven't moved that much recently, but I'm like, I guess this year we have moved twice. So if you're new here and you don't know the story, I did move out of the apartment that I lived in for the last three years back in like the very beginning of February. I was living with my ex and then we moved out. So Tilly and I both moved out and then we moved here to New York in July. So we did, I guess, move twice this year. She has actually transitioned really well to both moves and I was very nervous about both moves because cats really like routine, like change can be stressful to cats. And Tilly is, she's a bit older, so she's moved a few times in her life. She's about seven and a half. And I was especially nervous about the move to New York because not only was it a far move and she was riding in my U-Haul with me, but also it is a small space. So I was worried that like she wouldn't have enough space. But first of all, the U-Haul was great. Like I, I mentioned this in another Q&A, but she was amazing in the move ironically so much better than any like local move that I've ever done with her like she has moved a few times to places like an hour an hour and a half away so she's had to be in the car for that smaller portion of time and she's normally hates it like really not great for her so I always would dread that but for some reason the like 10 hour or maybe more I don't remember at this point but like the 10 hour or so trip to New York was a breeze like she just slept the whole time like every once in a while she would meow if we would like hit a bump or something but she seemed completely unbothered like she was fine and like i said i was kind of worried about space for her but tilly's also not a like run around to play kind of cat i feel like all cats kind of have their own style of playing she is a lay on her back and like kick at a toy kind of cat so even though we are in a smaller space now. I don't feel like it's negatively affected her. Like she seems very content and happy. She has three animatronic fish that you have seen in my vlogs before. And those are like her favorite toys. She just plays with those constantly. She's pretty chill. This question asked, how do I stay motivated and organized? And I don't know that I'm like fantastic at either. One thing I've been doing recently that I find pretty effective is writing out a schedule for the day and not just a to-do list, like an actual schedule. Like from this time to this time, I wanna do this. At this time, I wanna do this. And I don't always stay fully on track, but I feel like that is that allows me to reach my like optimal productivity. And not that every day you have to be incredibly productive, but I'm gonna use blend, but I feel like having a schedule like that keeps me quite on track. But I mean, I just like anyone else, I struggle to stay motivated, especially now that summer is gone and we have a lot less sun throughout the day. I had some comments about that or questions about that too. But one other tip that I have, 
aside from just like let yourself not be productive sometimes because you're a human being sometimes you need a break and you don't always have to be like running go 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 like you deserve breaks you deserve peace you deserve downtime and and sometimes you just have to be patient with yourself but what I was gonna say I found that I really like to set a timer for something this is especially great for household tasks if you notice yourself like wow i have not been motivated to like tidy up throughout the day i would set an alarm and say you know i want to just clean for 10 minutes or like some small amount of time that seems really digestible like don't say like i want to do this for an hour do it for something that is not intimidating set a timer on your phone and then just do everything that you can in 10 minutes and sometimes i'll even do five like i'm like you know what, I just want to set a timer and do what I can. And the thing is, the timer is nice because in your mind, you're like, okay, well, five minutes, that's nothing. I can do five minutes. But what you can accomplish in five minutes is usually pretty significant. Even if you don't think that it is, even I'm taking smoke now, even if you wouldn't like think that, like you can usually do quite a bit in five minutes. And then usually once the alarm goes off, I'm like, well, I'm already in the mood. I'm already cleaning. Like, let me just finish this. Or sometimes I'm not and I'm like, you know what? I did five minutes. That's better than nothing. So there's this quote that says like, everything worth doing is worth half-assing, which when you first hear it, by the way, I don't want my cousin on my channel. That felt weird to say on my channel. But when you first hear it, I know you think like, wait, that sounds kind of bad. But what I mean by that is if you know that getting some form of physical activity every day is going to be good for you, but today you just do not have it in you to do like, an hour at the gym, like do just a 10 minute workout routine on YouTube. If you can squeeze that in, if you can find the motivation to do that, like something small is better than nothing. Five minutes of tidying up is better than not doing anything at all. Like maybe you probably could benefit from doing like an hour of cleaning, but you can't find the motivation to do it. You can't find the time to do it. Like five minutes is better than nothing. Reading three pages a night in a book that you're trying to finish is better than nothing. And I'm gonna use this shade right here. I think sometimes just allowing yourself to do what you can do in the moment is the best gift you can give yourself. And then I'm gonna take, actually I'm gonna take brow bone and use that for the inner corner. I mean, even for skincare, if you're like, if you dread doing your skincare routine or you're like, I just cannot get myself to do this. If you can't do the full routine, just take your makeup off, grab like, your makeup eraser or something easy and just take your makeup off and then again going back to the idea of the timer thing sometimes that you get to that point and you're like well i already took it off i might as well put on a serum and some moisturizer or maybe you don't but it's still better than not doing anything okay now i'm going to use lash line and apply it to my lash line this question is about my hobbies outside of makeup and youtube and I love to crochet actually. I'm currently working on a sweater vest, which if you follow me on Instagram, you might've seen me post a little bit of that on my stories. I would say anything crafty I enjoy doing. Like I like to paint, I like to color, not that that's like super crafty, but anything I can do with my hands, I really enjoy. Kind of like makeup. This question is for, uh, or <laughs> this question is about tips for makeup that looks good in person. And I would say, Creams almost always look nice up close um, because there's usually less of a harsh line and just make sure you really tap it out. I would say I like to go over everything with my sponge, even if it's not a cream, even like right now I have powders on, like I would still go over my sponge because it kind of morphs everything together a little bit, diffuses the product out, but definitely creams. If you're taking photos or videos, powder normally translates really well with that, but up close creams usually translate better. This is not like 100% true 100% of the time, but it's kind of a nice general rule in my opinion. This next one says, I'd love to hear more about your clothes, purchasing habits, and thoughts on buying clothes. So I try not to shop too, too much. I mean, clothing waste is a, is a big problem, especially with the rise in fast fashion and trends just going in and out of style so rapidly. I try when I'm shopping to shop for staple pieces and not really trendy items and I think that's when you really develop more of your own style as opposed to just buying what's trendy now that won't be trendy in a month. Also, I try to buy most of my clothing secondhand. 
and I would say like more than half of what I buy, I would actually say probably 75% of what I buy, I thrift. Not only is that a lot more sustainable, but it's really fun for me. Like I enjoy thrifting and I've thrifted with you guys in a few of my blogs. Especially I would say I'm a little bit spoiled now that I live in New York. Thrifting here is, uh, it's like thrifting on easy mode really. But especially when I am shopping, I try to buy staple pieces that are higher quality and that doesn't necessarily equate to spending a ton of money that doesn't mean you have to spend a lot on your clothes but i think looking into the fabrics and knowing like how it's going to hold up is both sustainable in the long run but also kind of beneficial to you and your wallet that being said i will say now that i live in new york it definitely makes me want to shop more than when i lived in michigan i feel almost i don't want to say a pressure to look more tr put together here, but there's also something exciting about it. Like, you know, you can wear whatever you want. You're never gonna be too dressed up. So almost sometimes I feel like I wanna lean into it. Like, oh, let's, let's put together some cute outfits. And I do feel like living here makes me want to shop more. But again, I feel like I thrift more here too because there are a plethora of amazing thrift stores in the city. For a lip liner, I'm gonna use Essence Tea Time. And then NYX London all over the lips. I feel like I need a little bit more bronzer right now. And this question is must visit places in New York. If it's your first time ever coming, obviously I'm gonna say Central Park. I, that's my favorite part of the city. I mean, Central Park is huge, but I would say go there, but go there with a map so you know which areas to go to. I mean, it's all beautiful, but there are like certain spots like that a lot of movies are filmed in, like the Bow Bridge. Oh, that's one of my favorite areas. The Bethesda Fountain, I, I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. That's where Chuck and Blair get married in Gossip Girl. Um, I would say anytime I've ever been to that area of Central Park, at least it was like during the day, 100% of the time I've either seen someone getting married, getting engaged, or doing engagement photos. 100% of the time that I'm going like in the middle or the end of the day, not in the morning. The morning is actually my favorite time to go to the park when they have like off leash hours, which I think end at eight, but there's like dogs running around everywhere. Very cute. Have like a picnic on the Great Lawn. Also, I mean, I think all the touristy things are fun, like walking the Brooklyn Bridge. When my friends came to visit, we did that, of course. If you wanna see like really beautiful views of the Manhattan skyline, you kinda have to go outside of Manhattan. So either like to Brooklyn or even like to Jersey especially like in Dumbo, those are some gorgeous views if you're down by the water and there are like some great places around there to like grab a coffee and then walk over there and sit. Or another like gorgeous spot that I highly recommend is the seaport on uh, like Pier 17, you get such gorgeous views of uh, Brooklyn Bridge and like a little bit of Brooklyn and like even behind you, you can see like a little bit of Manhattan. There's also some really pretty restaurants down there. I think the High Line is really gorgeous if you wanna see some city views and do a little bit of walking. Or if you just wanna walk around like the Upper East and Upper West Sides, especially like close to the park. Gorgeous, like some of those beautiful homes and very quiet up there, not too crowded. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was kind of a full face of nothing new slash answering some of your questions. So if you did enjoy this, be sure to subscribe and I'll go ahead and see you in my next one. Bye.